we have been talking about the possibility of, of airborne transmission and aerosol transmission as one of the modes of, of transmission of um, COVID-19, um, as well as droplet. <laughs>I wanted to ask about the New York Times report previewing an open letter to be published by 239 scientists from around the world calling for the WHO to give greater acknowledgement to the risk of an airborne spread of COVID-19. Um, first of all, I wanted to get your reaction to those reports and to see what where WHO's research stands in terms of what um, where we are. We have discussed and collaborated uh, with many of the signatories of uh, the articles uh, that you have uh, mentioned over the last few months. Uh, and indeed, uh, we discussed the available evidence that has been discussed in these pieces. And also, uh, we received uh, contributions from uh, many of, of the signatories of these pieces um, we acknowledge that uh, there is uh, emerging evidence in this field, as in all other fields, uh, regarding the COVID-19 uh, virus and, and pandemic. Um, and therefore, uh, we believe that we have to be open uh, to this evidence and understand its implications regarding the modes of transmission and also regarding the precautions uh, that uh, uh, need to be taken. We have been engaged with this group since April uh, when they first wrote to us on April 1st. Um, and we've had an active engagement with them and with many of the signatories on this through, through different networks. Um, and as uh, uh, we have said previously, we welcome the interaction from scientists all over the world from many different disciplines. Um, many of the signatories are engineers, uh, which is a wonderful area of expertise, which, which adds to growing knowledge about the importance of ventilation, which we feel also is, is very important. Um, we have been talking about the possibility of, of airborne transmission and aerosol transmission as one of the modes of, of transmission of um, COVID-19, um, as well as droplet. We've looked at fomites, we look at fecal oral, we look at mother to child, we look at animal to human, of course, as well. And so we are, are producing um, a scientific brief on summarizing where we are. We've been working on this for several weeks now, uh, and we've engaged with a large number of groups, um, epidemiologists and clinicians, IPC specialists, engineers, mathematical modelers, to try to consolidate the growing knowledge around, around transmission. Um, but we have uh, spoken about the, the importance of all of the different potential modes of transmission. Um, this is a respiratory pathogen, um, and so it is important that what we know fits into the guidance that we have, which is why a comprehensive package of interventions are required to be able to stop transmission. This includes not only um, physical distancing, it includes the use of masks where appropriate in certain settings, specifically where you can't do physical distancing, um, and especially for healthcare workers. So our focus on, on the use of masks, of course, is for healthcare workers um, and to use airborne precautions where you have those aerosol generating procedures. But we're also looking at the possible role of airborne transmission in other settings where you have particularly closed settings where you have poor ventilation. So uh, we will be issuing our brief in, in the coming days um, and that will outline everything that we have in this area.